Well, we're not even two weeks past Christmas, and the, Chris, the Christian calendar already has us at Jesus' baptism, which occurred when he was very much into adulthood. Now, maybe because Christmas remained fresh in my heart, after all, it really just ended yesterday, but I've been really um, engaged this Christmas, and it's in my heart. When I was preparing for this sermon over the last week or so, I sat with the story of Jesus' baptism with his birth still on my mind. I also think I had birth on my mind because this year, 2018, I really want a big dose of God's grace. I want God's grace to come upon me so that I can birth some new things in my life. And I'm excited about what um, God's dose of grace um, on this church, what we might bring forth uh, in 2018. So I, I just have birth on my mind. Now that said... It's not really much of a leap to connect birth and baptism. Actually, for us Christians, connecting birth and baptism really does make sense. You might recall in the Gospel according to John that there's this conversation between Jesus and Nicodemus. And the, these two men are talking late at night, and Jesus has this to say to Nicodemus. He says, I assure you, unless someone is born anew, it's not possible for them to see God's kingdom. Of course, Nicodemus is confused at this point and asks Jesus a good question. Nicodemus asks, well, how is it possible for an adult to be born? It's impossible to enter the mother's womb for a second time and be born, isn't it? And Jesus answers Nicodemus' question by saying, I assure you, unless someone is born of water and the Spirit, it's not possible to enter God's kingdom. So we see that baptism really is a kind of birth. It's a birth into a new form of life. Baptism is a birth into a life that is intentionally formed by God. It is a birth into a life that's lived intentionally according to God's purposes for us. Baptism is a birth into a whole way of life as God desires our life to be. So in our story today, Jesus is born anew. Born anew as God calls him into a new life of public ministry and service to others. Back in Nazareth, Jesus' identity as Savior was more hidden as he lived a relatively quiet life. But now his identity as Savior is out in the open. It has taken on a life of its own. As Jesus' ministry begins, he is born more fully into the world. And he's born into the world more fully so that as he goes about his ministry, people can either reject him or receive him. I just imagine the Holy Spirit, that Holy Spirit that we see at the beginning of Genesis, hovering over the deep sea, creating that first day. That same Holy Spirit came upon Mary. You might remember at Jesus' Jesus' conception. And now that same Holy Spirit comes over Jesus at his baptism. It's that Holy Spirit that is empowering him to be born anew, for that new birth into ministry and service to happen. And we see in the story that God receives him afresh with 
much delight and great love as Mary did when that infant Jesus was placed into her arms for the first time. God says in our story today, as much as Mary must have on that Christmas morning, God says, you are my son, whom I dearly love. In you I find happiness. Both these stories, Christmas and Jesus' baptism, are mysteries of birth. And so I was wondering to myself that we have these mysteries of birth. What might that say to us in these earliest days of 2018? And for me, I found an answer when I came across a poem this week by Madeline Lengel. And it was tucked into one of those emails uh, that I was too busy to read. Uh, during the Christmas season. I was just too busy, and I almost missed it. I almost just put it in the uh, email trash. But I opened it, and I read it, and I'm so glad I did. I'm so glad I found this poem, because it's beautiful how it came to me precisely as I was making this connection between Jesus' two births. His birth in Bethlehem and his birth in the Jordan River. The poem, The Risk of Birth, goes like this. This is no time for a child to be born. With the earth betrayed by war and hate and a comet slashing the sky to warn that time runs out and the sun burns late. That was no time for a child to be born in a land in the crushing grip of Rome. Honor and truth were trampled by scorn, yet here did the Savior make his home. When is the time for love to be born? The inn is full on planet Earth. And by a comet, the sky is torn, yet love still takes the risk of birth. Love emerging to be born. Love emerging to be born. That's what connects Jesus' birth at the stable and his baptism in the Jordan River, that love emerging to be born. God's love for this world is so great that God takes the risk of birth to give love a face in Jesus and to give love a mission through his ministry. It's not like the times were favorable for God's love to be born in Jesus' birth or his baptism. The world was full of discord and disorientation. There wasn't any indication that people would even receive Jesus at Bethlehem or at the Jordan River. But nonetheless, God risked birthing love through Jesus' life anyway. God doesn't consider favorable times or unfavorable, failure or success. God doesn't weigh pros and cons. God loves the world, and so God risks birthing that love into being through Jesus and through all who follow him. So I think these stories ask us an important question. What love must we risk giving birth to? What love must we risk giving birth to? Back in November, I talked about my experience 
serving at the St. Francis Inn in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And this was a, in a sermon about service. And I was recounting that time back um, in my 20s when I was in seminary. Days earlier, though, as I was preparing for this sermon, I was watching a YouTube video from the St. Francis Inn. And as I watched that place of ministry, I got back in touch with my own call, my own call to ministry. And I got back in touch with such a deep and profound love, a love that I have, a heart's desire to serve people, to serve people in need. And as that love awakened in my heart, it got me to reflect on what a wonderful ministry we have here in our Tuesday morning outreach. And I began to wonder how we were going to move forward with that ministry, with Carly, our much-loved and gifted director, was moving just in a short time, and how are we going to keep going? And as I sat there at my computer monitor, I heard the Spirit's prompting. Ruth, you could step into this ministry. I felt both elation and fear. I was elated because it was suddenly as if I had an opportunity to serve among the homeless the way I did at the St. Francis Inn that touched my life so deeply that had somehow kind of eluded me all through these years of ministry in the local church setting that I never quite had that opportunity to let that love come into being. I was elated that maybe this was my chance. And yet also I was terrified, absolutely terrified that there might actually now be an opportunity to make this a reality. The question that I kept coming around as in the weeks that followed was, could I take the risk of birthing the love that I had carried in my heart for 25 years? I sought discernment and input of others, and I received affirmation and support. And lo and behold, this week, I'm jumping in with all of our fabulous volunteers into Tuesday morning outreach, into that leadership. And I say this to you, I share this to you, because this new ministry role is one way that I am taking the risk of birth in my life this year. And God desires you to take the risk of birth in your life too. So what deep dreams, what seeds of possibility, what leadings of the Spirit do you want to bring forth? What's on your bucket list that you want to fulfill so that you might become more of the unique person that God calls you to be? What do you long to create? What do you want to give expression to that is in your heart? What love would you bring forth if you ceased judging yourselves and your dreams so harshly, discounting your dreams, saying, well, my dreams aren't big enough, my dreams aren't important enough, I'm not important enough. What love would you bring forth if you stopped comparing yourselves to others, wishing you had somebody else's gifts and graces rather than focusing on the flowering of your own? What love would you bring forth if you weren't afraid? What makes you hesitate or resist taking risks of birth in your life? One of the reasons why we find love so scary is that it necessarily involves risk. To love is to risk. It's that simple. 
Because when we love, we experience the impulse to take the risk of birthing it into the world. We want to make our love visible. We want to make it real. And when we do that, our love takes on a life of its own. We love another person, a friend, a spouse, a child. And we risk committing our hearts and we risk countless actions on their behalf. We even take the risk of losing them. We love our career, we love our calling, and we risk giving it our energies and our other precious resources. We love a particular craft or art or a form of service, and we risk putting our creativity, our very heart, out there in the world. Jesus himself took the risk of birth when he both stepped into and out from the baptismal waters. After all those hidden years in Nazareth, it was time to bring forth saving love for all of humanity, all of creation. The poem asks us, when is the time for love to be born? The time is now. Love still takes the risks of birth. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.